Hello everyone, welcome to the daily newspaper analysis of the Shankar Ace Academy brought to you by the Civil Speedia team. And for today's day 22-8-2024, these are the list of important articles that we would be discussing today in this video along with prelims practice questions. Before that, there is a small announcement. Sorry, the pre-storming prelims test series of 2025 will be started from the 6th September of 2024, which is the batch one. And along with it, to boost your UPSC mains preparation with us, All India UPSC mains open book mock test 2024 is also launched. So anyone interested can look for the link in the description. So now without any much further delay, let's get into the articles discussion one by one. Now let us move to the first article for today. In collaboration with the ICAR National Rice Research Institute and the Pennsylvania State University, they have developed a plant genome editor using a protein derived from the bacteria Dinococcus radiodurans. This new editor named TNPB is less than the half size of the commonly used CRISP protein which is the Cas9 and Cas12, making it small enough to target specific parts of the DNA more effectively. Now let us see what gene editing is. Gene editing means changing the genetic material of an organism or a plant which includes alteration, adding or replacing the DNA sequences. Now let us see few gene editing tools when it comes to agriculture or especially uh, specific plants or crops. First is the CRISP-Cas9 uh, clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats. Uh, this tool uses Cas9 enzyme. This tool uses Cas9 protein and enzyme which works as the scissors and works based on RNA direction or guide RNA. It used to develop crops with traits like drought tolerance, pest resistance and improved nutrition. Next is the talens which is transcription activator like effector nucleases. This tool used talent and engineered protein to target and cut DNA sequences. It is used in crops for targeted gene disruption or correction such as modifying diseases resistance gene. Next is the ZFNS which is the zinc finger nucleosis. It is an engineered DNA binding protein used to find perfect gaps in the sequences used in creating crops with traits like herbicide resistance and improved yield. It is also uses the DNA for binding proteins to find specific DNA sequences. Now let us look at the benefits of gene editing for the crops. First is the improved yield. Gene editing can increase the efficiency of photosynthesis, improve nutrient uptake and boost plant resilience to environmental stress by reducing the pressure to convert natural ecosystems into farmlands. Next is the enhanced nutrition. This includes increasing the levels of vitamins, minerals and other essential nutrients as well as reducing harmful compounds. This can help address malnutrition and nutrition deficiencies particularly in developing countries. Next is the pest and disease resistance. Gene editing can create crops that are more resistant to pests and diseases reducing the need for chemical pesticides and fungicides. Reducing the reliance on chemical inputs lowers protection cost for farmers and decreases environmental pollution. And finally, the ultimate goal is the climate resistance. Gene editing can develop crops that are more resilient to extreme weather conditions such as drought, heat and flooding. Resilient crops ensure stable food production even in the face of climate change helping to secure food supplies which ultimately aims for food security especially for a country like India. Now let us see the problems associated with the GM crops. First is the genetic pollution. The genes from the GM crops can spread to wild relatives or non-GM crops through cross pollution. This gene flow can generate genetic pollution where non-GM crops inadvertently acquire traits from GM varieties. This can threaten the biodiversity and the purity of organic and traditional crop varieties. Next is the pollination. GM crops are designed to be insect resistant, can also affect non-target products or non-target species including beneficial insects like the pollinators and predators of pest control. This small change can disrupt the ecosystem and lead to declines in important insect populations such as the bees which are crucial for pollination. 
Next is the commercialization. The development and the commercialization of the GM crops are often controlled by a few large corporate organizations, leading to the concerns about corporate control over the food supply and the concentration of power in the agricultural industry. Next is the health concerns. GM foods could have unknown long-term health effects such as triggering allergies or transferring antibiotic resistant genes to humans. And finally, the biodiversity. The widespread adoption of GM products or GM crops can lead to a reduction in the genetic diversity of crops as farmers may favor GM varieties over traditional or local ones. Moving on to the next news, Malaysia have revised their proposal of sending critically endangered orangutans as gifts to palm oil importing countries. The new plan offers these countries to sponsor orangutans with funds directed towards their conservation in Malaysia. This have focused on dual uh, goals such as conservation efforts of the orangutans and at the same time promoting sustainable palm oil practices as the first policy was criticized very much by the activists and as well as the people of the Malaysian country. So first let us see what is an orangutan diplomacy. Orangutan diplomacy refers to the use of orangutans to promote conservation and diplomatic relationships which is can also be seen as a symbol of diplomatic efforts and international cooperation, particularly in conservation and wildlife protection. In 2019, the Malaysian government initiated a program to return 25 orangutans from Taiwan zoos to the natural habitat. This move was seen as a gesture of goodwill and a symbol of strengthened diplomatic ties between the two countries. The term orangutan diplomacy was coined to describe this unique international approach or international relation leveraging conservation efforts and the iconic status of the orangutans to foster cooperation and friendship between nations. First, let us see the criticisms of the orangutan diplomacy. First is the symbolic gesture. Critics argue that it is just a mere symbolism which lacks a tangible impact such as the conservation of the orangutans. Next is the conservation concerns all again. Orangutan habit destruction, poaching continue is still happening. And finally, the political motivations. There has been use on using orangutans for political gains. Now, let us move on to the palm oil production in Malaysia. According to the article, Malaysia is the second largest country when it comes to palm oil and country like India is an importer of palm oil production from the countries like Malaysia. So any effects in the palm oil production will actually have a direct impact in countries like India when it comes to trade and exports. Malaysian palm oil production thrives due to its tropical climate with consistent rainfall and warm temperatures ideal for oil palm cultivation. The government supports this industry through various initiatives including the Malaysian Palm Oil Board which is MPOB which promotes research, development and sustainable practices. Malaysia is also the member of Roundtable of Sustainable Palm Oil emphasizing eco-friendly production methods. Additionally, tax intensives and subsidies encourage investment and expansion. These factors have made Malaysia one of the largest producers and experts of palm oil globally, contributing significantly to the nation's economy. Now let us move to the challenges faced by the palm oil production. First is the environmental impact. Concerns like deforestation, habitat destruction, loss of biodiversity are significant concerns. Clearing land for oil palm plantations has led to the depletion of rainforest and threatens endangered species like the orangutan. Next is the sustainability issues. Although Malaysia promotes sustainable practices, achieving widespread compliance, it is still challenging. Unsustainable practices can lead to soil degradation, water pollution and greenhouse gas emissions. The third concern is the labor. The industry relies heavily on migrant labor leading to issues such as exploitation, poor working conditions and human rights violation. The next is the market pressure. Global demand for these sustainable and eco-friendly products is increasing, pressuring Malaysia to adhere to stricter environmental practices. Non-compliances can result in boycotts and reduce market access. Next is the price mortality. Fluctuating global palm oil prices impact the profitability of producers affecting smallholders disproportionately. 
and finally is the competition. Malaysia faces competition from other palm oil producing countries like Indonesia which can affect its market share and export revenues. The next article is about the AI and its losing hype. Investors are getting worried that the artificial intelligence might not bring huge profits as they expected. According to the reports recently, the stock prices of the major AI companies have dropped by 15%. Some experts are questioning the limitations of the AI, especially large language models like the chat GPT. Despite big investments in AI, only 4.8% of the American companies are currently using it a decrease from earlier this year. So let us understand what the hype cycle is all about. The hype cycle it is a concept describing the life cycle of new technologies where they go through phases such as the initial excitement and over investment a period of disappointment and finally a gradual comeback as the technology becomes more useful. For example like the trains and the internet in the 19th century and 1990s follow this pattern both went through a boom and a bust and then eventual widespread use now let us look at the ai and the hype cycle ai has gone through several periods of excitement and disappointment over the decades but hasn't fully completed the hype cycle in the 1960s there were excitement over early ai like chat boots but this was followed by ai winters that is the period of low interest in the 1970s and the 1990s. Moving to the expectation of the hype cycle, not all technologies follow the hype cycle. That is, AI hasn't, example, AI hasn't fully completed the hype cycle. For example, cloud computing, solar power and the social media have seen steady growth without a major crash. But on the other hand, some technologies like the Web3 and 3D printing have not bounced back after their initial excitement. Now let us look at the study findings from the article. Research shows that the hype cycle isn't a universal pattern. Only about one-fifth of the technologies go through the full cycle for innovation to widespread use. Many technologies either succeed without a crash or never recover after a major crash or a burst. Around 60% of the technologies that enter the trough of the disillusionment don't make a comeback. Now let us look at the challenges associated with the acceptance of AI tools. First is the trust and reliability. In that it is the lack of transparency. AI systems can often operate as black boxes for instance in metaphoric to how they are opaque and how they are not having the transparency as it making it hard for users to understand how decisions are made which leads to their mistrust. Next is the bias and fairness. AI tools can reflect and amplify existing biases in data leading to unfair outcomes which undermine public confidence. Next is the job displacement. First is the fear of job loss. Many people worry that AI will replace human workers especially in sectors like manufacturing, customer service and even professional jobs like legal work. Next is the skills gap. The shift towards the AI driven processes requires new skills and there is a concern that many workers may not be able to adapt quickly. Third is the ethical concerns which is very important. First is the privacy issue. AI relies on large amounts of personal data, raising concerns about how this data is collected, stored and used. There is anxiety over the level of control of AI systems may have in critical areas like the healthcare legal systems and warfare where human judgment is traditionally paramount. And finally is the regulation and accountability. There is lack of standards that is there is global debate on how AI should be regulated and the op absence of clear guidelines is, can lead to assistance in adoption. And next is the accountability. When AI systems make mistakes or cause harm, it is often unclear who is responsible leading to legal and ethical dilemmas. Next challenge is the high cost of accessibility. First is the initial investment. AI tools can be expensive which makes it difficult for small businesses and developing countries to adopt them. Next is the infrastructure requirements. AI needs advanced technological infrastructure which may not be available in all regions leading to unequal benefits. Next is the cultural and societal resistance. First is the resistance to change. People and organizations may be resistant to adopting AI 
due to preference for traditional methods and fear of the unknown especially in a country like india people of old age are still not aware on how to use computers and so on next is the digital divide in societies like low digital literacy there may be significant barriers to understanding and accepting ai tools next is the cyber security threats issues ai systems can be vulnerable to hacking and other cyber threats which can undermine their reliability and safety such as the dark web and finally is the misuse of ai there are concerns about ai being used maliciously for example deep fakes autonomous weapons or invasive surveillances which can lead to societal pushback now let us look at a question in reference to the article with reference to palm oil consider the following statements the palm oil tree is native to southeast asia it is used in the manufacture of cosmetics food products and biofuels the global demand for palm oil has been a significant driver of deforestation which of the following statements given are correct 1 and 2 2 and 3 1 and 3 and 1 2 and 3 the right answer is 2 and 3 both the statement second and third statement are right the first statement is wrong the palm oil tree is native to southeast asia which is wrong palm oil tree is native to west africa moving on to the prelims practice question according to the article consider the following statements statement 1 the genome editor using protein derived from bacteria dinococcus radiodurans can give better precision statement 2 the protein is less than half the size of the commonly used crisp protein that is cas9 and cas12 the answer is both these statements are correct and statement 2 is the correct explanation of statement 1 in the case of new bacteria is found they would ask the uses of such bacteria so it's better for upsc aspirants to look into the uses of any bacteria given especially when it comes to upsc moving on to the prelims question for the article with the print state of development artificial intelligence can effectively do which of the following first to bring down electricity consumption in industrial units second to create meaningful short stories and songs this is diagnosis text to speech conversion and finally wireless transmission for electrical energy select the correct answer using the code given option a 1 2 3 and 5 option b 1 3 and 4 option c 2 4 and 5 and option d 1 2 3 4 and 5 which is everything the correct answer is option d 1 2 3 4 and 5 literally every statements are correct when it comes to ai as it has vast uses thank you for watching this video don't forget to give a like comment and a share and to further not to miss any other contents subscribe to our channel thank you and have a nice day